once again welcome to another episode of Reverend C's Kitchen where we're cooking up everything except spirits reminding you to click like subscribe comment down below share as today I bring you a, another one of Reverend C's recipes out of the kitchen the real kitchen this time you wanted it you got it this is Filipino Sinigang with a twist Okay, so when it comes to making Filipino synagogue, there is a real rocket science to it. But there is different recipes to it. So this is Reverend C's way. And again, I like doing simple, quick recipes where the hardest part is actually the longest part, the weight. First we start off with this. You need a slab of pork. I personally only use pork when I make synagogue. I don't particularly like the chicken or the chicken wings with the sinigang. I don't like it soggy. Um, I don't like the beef. Beef is okay, but pork soaks up the best flavor. Next thing you need, before anything else I would advise, a pot. So there's your pot, and you, you do your math. This happens to be, if you can get it on the camera right there, uh, 1.83 pounds. So we're looking at slightly over and three quarters so my rule of thumb is a quarter quarter cup or excuse me a cup of water for every quarter pound so seven cups of water for this bad boy now uh, so go ahead and just fill your pot I'll go ahead and do that and then I will go into what I do a little bit differently than is traditional Okay, so this is what a pound and over three quarters of pork looks like when you cut it all up into pieces, into cubes. Uh, since it was close enough, uh, since it is close enough to two pounds, go ahead, air on the side of caution, and go one extra cup, so eight cups in the pot for this one. Remember, a quarter cup for every quarter pound, unless you go over the quarter, then another quarter, uh, depending how much stuff you're going to put in it, um, and also depending on how sour and bitter you want it to be. Uh, so this is what you're going to need for your meat. Some pepper. A little garlic powder. And the most important of all things, the real shit, the OG shit. Adobo. The seasoning. Remember, OG Spain. Okay. So go ahead and just season it lightly. You don't want to over season it because of the fact that your guests, if you're having people over, you know, may not want it to kick major ass. Or maybe you do. Now, if you're making it for yourself, you do what you want. Remember that the salt will get watered down as it cooks. So now, just lightly pepper it. Well. You lightly pepper it. The one that appears the hardest to stick is always the garlic powder. Um, the garlic powder will also add a little bit of saltiness to it. That's why I said don't overdo it with the adobo. Uh, also, no need to really do more than one side. Uh, if you're in a bit of a rush, you know, like I said before, you can always kind of mat it down. This is a glass stove, so, you know, reuse the, the excess and now here is the hard part with this hurry up and wait and we wait and wait and wait and let it season I'd say about 15 minutes with the magic of video and video okay so these are the things you're gonna need to do this after your Swine has been sitting for 15 minutes seasoning. You need regular salt, okay? Just plain Jane salt. You still need the pepper. Get yourself a bag of mixed veggie medley. 
Uh, if this is going to be vegetarian, which is actually not bad, you can go with two of these. Get yourself, all you need is one lemon, one onion if you want to add a little bit of something something to it. Grab a couple of tomatoes for the sweetness, one per gallon. And the mandatory must have of Filipino goodness for Sinarang San Sampaloc mix. You got to have the tamarind soup mix. Whee, let's do it right there. Everybody look at it. Ain't it awesome? You got to have this. Without this, you just don't have synagogue. This is awesome. This one, uh... Again, I'm not being paid by anybody or endorsed, but you can see that one's the real deal. See how it says imported product of Philippines. Perfect. So that's what we want. That's what we need. So now what we do is we take our, we're just going to get our cutting board. And on this side, on this side over here, you can see I got my pot. All right, I'm going to go ahead and just turn this sucker on. Okay, and start boiling. So now, this is just my spin on it. Okay, this guy can start boiling. It's going to take its sweet time. What's the frying pan for? Remember how I said I hate soggy meat? Yeah, that's what this is for. First things first, though, while you got your water still cold, and you can get close to it, go ahead and... Put your little pepper in there. Put a little bit of salt, not too much. Okay, that adds a little something something and you can put your pepper away. At this point I'm just using a regular spoon. That's about it. Now, again, if you wanna give it a little bit of oomph, you don't have to, but you can, I personally like it. Get yourself some olive oil. Just a little bit, you don't need a whole lot. I'll let you see what it looks like inside the pot. Not sure how well you can see it. And I only put about two tablespoons roughly. I figure a tablespoon for every gallon, of, or excuse me, for every four cups of water. I should have said the same thing for the tomatoes. One tomato for every four cups of water. And there you go, and that's gonna boil. So this guy here, um, you can use the olive oil if you want, or I personally prefer cooking spray. It's just a healthier, cleaner, nicer alternative. So while your water's boiling, you can fire this guy up. And what you're going to do is you're going to sear your meat. You're not going to cook it. You're just going to sear it. So it's still going to be raw on the inside. Okay? It's going to be, you know, medium rare. But we are going to seal, we are going to sear that meat to get that outside somewhat cooked. Uh, I've done this two different ways. I find the pan is just a little bit neater, even though, yeah, it's more dishes to have to clean. But I have actually in the past done it right in the pot and uh, then moved my meat out to you know save on washing dishes so right now I'm gonna go ahead sear the meat uh, just kind of feel when it starts getting hot I'm gonna go ahead and sear the meat and uh, when it's done I'll let you see what it looks like okay you can probably still hear the sizzling in the background so in the meantime what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start cutting my veggies the first one I like to add are the ones that you want to taste the least. Just, you know, my opinion, because they get watered down the quickest. So this is the onions. I skin the onion, uh, depending on how you like them. I personally like to cut them in the quarters. And I'll just go ahead and cut them in the quarters. Um, and then as, as you cut, you go ahead and you go ahead just go ahead and throw them in the pot. 
That water is still not boiling. I can feel the pot is hot, but again, not boiling. Uh, so go ahead, cut your onions, and kind of do these in phases is what I like to do. Um, again, what you want to taste the least is the way you want to, is what I personally think is the one you want to throw in first. So you're adding a little something to it. So I'm just going to go ahead and scoop these down. Okay. Uh, so the second to last one I like to throw in, believe it or not, are tomatoes. Uh, the tomatoes, I'm going to grab a couple here. Uh, they don't have to be anything huge, just these regular old, you know, plum tomatoes. We'll go ahead and we'll wash them. Uh, give them a quick rinse. And go ahead and use them for, you know, our mix. Okay, and I cut my tomatoes into little squares. I'm cutting the ends off. You know, right now you're cutting them into little rings. But just go ahead and just cut them into little squares. You know, so that uh, you get a nice, that nice little, little bit of sweetness, but not a whole lot of sweetness. Because let's face it, if it's sweet, it ain't synagogue, right? It's, it's, who the hell knows what that is? But it's not synagogue. But if there is a sweet soup that's uh, from the Philippines, somebody let me know. I'd be curious to try it. Um, you know, see, give you my take on it or what I think about it. I'm personally not a huge sweets guy. Um, I prefer the synagogue because it is, you know, sour. I like it uber sour. Uh, now, just to add, if uh, you know that nobody's going to be offended, and you're like me and you like it uber sour, drop two of those tamarind mixes into the soup. Okay, when you do that, whoo, my God, it kicks major ass. I mean, major, major ass. So here's our tomatoes. I'm not going to dump them in. Not yet, because my water is still not boiling. Uh, but just so you get a look at the meat. This is this is all you really want to do with the pork. So that's it. Once that water starts getting a little bit hotter, start boiling. Uh, you got the onions in there right now. You have the uh, pepper and the salt. Uh, now if you want, I've used uh, garlic in the past. Uh, a little bit of garlic, like a couple cloves, it's okay. It's not bad, but it all depends on what you want to do. Uh, so at this point, I'm going to just patiently wait for this water to heat up a little bit more before I dump my meat into it. So, you know, magic of video. Alright, so now we got this beautiful boiling pot of goodness. I've already thrown the meat in there. It's been about 10 minutes, so at this point is when I start adding stuff to it. That's just the way I do it. Okay. So you take your bag of you take your bag of veggies, okay, and just go ahead and toss the entire bag in there. Whole bag, just throw it in there. Okay? It should stop the boiling for a few seconds. Buy you some time to grab your big, 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 big spoon and you just give it a turn. I'm just gonna go ahead and stir. All right, and now you go. You see that bubbles are starting to come back. You get a nice little boil. Uh, at this point, usually I like to wait. So what I'll do is I will speed up the process. You know how it works. All right, now the pot is cooking with some horsepower. See that? Woo! All right. So right now, this has been cooking with some horsepower. You can go ahead and lower that heat. I drop it down to eight. It was on high, which is 10 on my particular, you know, range. Uh, take an onion, just core it. You know, don't have to core it, excuse me. Just cut, cut it in half. Oof, water's hot. And just go ahead and spread some onion, some of uh, the on uh, lemon in there. Not all of it. Get a good amount of it though. Okay, go ahead and do that part. Okay, and you're still kicking some ass. You know, kicking some ass here. 
you know for damn sure your beef is done. Now, if it's so hot to the point where, I mean, you, you just can't keep a hand in there. Um, I, I can tell this is very, very hot. Notice I switched to my left hand, which is the, the nerve damage hand, so it, it's not as bad as it is with my right hand. It's like instantly. Just go ahead and knock it down to about a six. Uh, you want to keep that high heat, though, um, for that particular one. Go ahead and let it ride out. Now, at this point... It's been, uh, it's pretty hot. Okay, let's let it go for about a minute. Already know. And, boy, I gotta get the hang of this one day. Alright, with time elapsed, five minutes, time for this bad boy. Now again, if you want it super sour, which I personally personally prefer, use two. In this case, we're just gonna dump the one. Okay. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, as the great Negan would say. Okay. So you wanna make sure you turn it in, you know, you, you spread it around your soup. There we go. And you want to go ahead and go the other way, making sure that that delicious tamarind goodness from the Filipino archipelago seeps into every little ounce of that juice that you got in there, called that miraculous, beautiful, outstanding synagogue. I absolutely think this is an amazing dish. Uh, I personally like it alone, um, but you can eat it with rice. Uh, if you want to be a little more healthy conscious, a little cauliflower rice, or uh, a little bit less, but more than white rice, you can do a little bit of brown rice, whatever you choose. I personally like it as is, uh, and I actually like it vegetarian, and I am not a vegetarian, um, but uh, I feel that, uh, you know, if you don't have meat, it's good enough. I mean, that's how awesome this thing is, uh, and... Um, you can also feel good that you're eating a pretty healthy dish. Uh, don't let people lie to you to say pork is not healthy. Fatty, gross pork, yes. Good, clean, cut, lean pork, no. In this case, I used it with a little bit of fat. A, because, yeah, it tastes good. B, because that's the way my wife likes it. Uh, and me too, in all reality. Uh, if I didn't like it, I wouldn't do it. I don't know what the hell but what she wants. Uh, but that's the excuse I tell her. Uh, and yeah, she does see these, so there you go, I don't give a shit. Uh, there's uh, no simps here, no simp zone. So, right now, uh, we'll go ahead and elapse time. Okay, a little more elapsed time. I like to spread my intervals about five minutes, roughly. While you still got the water boiling as hot I did leave out one secret ingredient I think I can't remember I am not gonna go back and edit it Hungarian paprika now if you want a little kick just cut it the way I did just cut the ends off dump it in the pot good to go if you want the if you want it to be spicier you know simply take your blade and cut it down the middle spread it it's really in the seeds if you want it to be hot as hell, chop that shit up just like you would a jalapeno and throw that shit in there and let it be nice and hot with more lemon, more damn tamarind, and it's going to be kick-ass. So we just go ahead and dump that sucker in there uh, while it's nice and hot so we can let some of those seeds explode and, uh, you know, permeate through this beautiful pot of uh, deliciousness. And I will leave this little part out of the video. This is going to be depending on how bitter you may want it. A more bitter, less bitter. Uh, in between now and a few minutes, you'll go ahead and smash the rest of that lemon into the pot. If you think it's going to be good as is, leave it alone. You can always come back and add lemon or salt later to your liking. I personally don't like to do that. I like to let it go on every stage. 
and live with the result uh, as it kind of should be in my opinion uh, so through the magic of video and elapsed time all right at this point you've gone ahead and you put everything in except for the tomatoes remember you started 10 minutes to boil with onions pepper and uh, olive oil and you put in your beef once it started boiling 10 minutes to boil your beef that was already seared after you put in that beef for about 10 minutes you had put in the veggies after five minutes later so now you are at roughly about 25 minutes after you did your veggies what came a little bit of lemon five minutes of lemon 30 minutes after you did your five minutes of lemon you put in your Hungarian pepper that's a, another five minutes it's 35 minutes after five minutes of that you decide to put in lemon a uh, little side note if you have calamansi which is basically the Asian version of key limes for us in the in the uh, Western Hemisphere those are better you're gonna get more of a rich island flavor out of those than you would out of using lemons just so you know we use lemons this one because it's what we can get our hands on right now um, but now you've been cooking what was that I added up was it 40 minutes all right 40 minutes uh, but once you put in your lemon lower your heat down you can see it's not really kicking that much ass anymore now I dump my tomatoes in finally right reason I leave them for last is because I don't want them to disintegrate so stir in your tomatoes it is on uh, it is on medium heat now uh, so once you stir those tomatoes wait about another five minutes uh, this is just how I do it. I like to plan it out, kind of do it in, in blocks, and uh, do it very methodically. So you got your tomatoes in there. All good. And at this point, if you want to let it breathe, let it breathe. If you want to cover it, cover it. Doesn't matter to me. Uh, you can go ahead and cover it if you want, and lower it, not to low. Uh, but I put this at a not at the lowest setting, but at a low heat at this point. Uh, anywhere between two and four. So let's pick three. Okay. So now you already got about 20 minutes left, roughly. Because I always say give it an hour tops cooking time. At this point, you walk away. And then uh, I decided to cover my pot. You don't really have to, but I decided to do it. Uh, you will cover it later when you're done, but with the, again, time-lapse magic of video. Okay, there's another important part of the synagogue, at least to me, that I left out, which is, uh, you gotta let it settle. At least I do. I let it settle. Uh, so this has already been 30 minutes. This is after the heat has been turned off left on there to simmer and it's been you know 20 minutes after that so it's been about 30 minutes so now it's settled given a chance for everything in the pot to kind of go all over the place and be one with the matrix okay so now we give it a stir and now this is where you know you give it that that taste test Just trust me, this shit is still hot. Woo! Mm. That is good old school with a twist Filipino goodness right there. That is some awesome shit. Now, me personally, I prefer this to be a little bit more sour. So I would have dumped another bag of tamarind. Uh, you can try to sour it up a tiny bit by adding some more lemon. Remember that lemon? Whatever's left of it, kind of squeeze it entirely or adding a little bit of salt. But I personally don't do that. I leave that out for the other person to go ahead and do it. Um, but this is done. This bad boy is ready 
to serve. Mmm, and there it is. Look at this beautiful bowl of Filipino goodness. You can see a nice thick broth. It's kind of the way I like it. You know, you got your you know your veggies, your carrots, your broccoli here. These are the slabs of tomatoes, onions have pretty much dissolved a little bit left in your pork. Only thing left to do is bottoms up. And that is Reverency's take on the classic Filipino dish of Sinigang. I hope you enjoyed watching this as much as I enjoyed eating it. I doubt it, but hopefully. And maybe give you a little bit of an understanding or a little bit of a different view on how this just awesome dish is done. Uh, so again, I thank you for stopping in, uh, reminding you as Reverend C to stay safe, be ye kind one to another. Peace out, and I will catch you on the next one.